We have reached the halfway point of Tick Week, and tonight, a look at the long-term health problems caused by Lyme disease. We're talking about things like chronic pain, fatigue, and neurological issues. According to the U.S. Centers for Disease Control, most of those symptoms can be treated successfully with antibiotics if caught early. But even then, the bacteria that causes Lyme can still linger in the body. New Center Maine's Vivian Lee joins us now to tell us more about recent findings in some groundbreaking research. Viv? Well, the study was conducted, Pat, by Tulane University. Researchers studied the autopsy brain tissue of an elderly woman who had that early treatment following a deer tick bite. Now, researchers hope their findings will lead to better testing and better treatments for Lyme patients. Dr. Monica Embers is a PhD and an associate professor of microbiology and immunology at Tulane University in New Orleans. For more than 20 years, she has studied Borrelia burgdorferi, the agent that causes Lyme disease, in lab animals at the Tulane National Primate Research Center. This is not a pathogen that you want to have in your brain. But that's exactly what researchers found in a 69-year-old woman who donated her brain for research before she died from dementia-related complications. At 54, following a positive Lyme test, she went on a 10-day course of antibiotics. The treatment resolved her symptoms, but she later developed neurological Lyme. I started going on a downhill path uh, neurologically uh, after about two years of, of her diagnosis. Despite years of IV antibiotics, the patient suffered with sleep disorders, personality changes, and finally dementia. Lyme pathogens were also found in the woman's spinal cord. Dr. Ember says unlike typical bacteria, Borrelia has the ability to invade the immune system and move into different areas of the body. There are uh, techniques that the, the bacteria use to become tolerant to the antibiotics. The study is raising red flags for Carlene Hoffman. I just thought, you know, this this could happen to me. This could happen to anybody. She suffered from debilitating fatigue, pain, depression, and suicidal thoughts for 15 years, seeking help from numerous doctors before finally being diagnosed with late-stage Lyme. After a regime of antibiotics, antiviral medications, and supplements, Carlene finally turned a corner. While able to take walks with her husband, Brad, she still suffers, though, from leg pain and numbness because the disease she believes may have affected her central nervous system. But why isn't Lyme disease out there like cancer is? You know, it's just as terrible on your body. So, you know, we need to step up the game. The study was recently published in Frontiers in Neurology, the leading peer-reviewed journal for neurologists. A breakthrough that could lead to changes in recommendations for treatment, including longer courses of antibiotics to address a growing public health crisis and hopefully better outcomes. Now, Dr. Embers collaborated with researchers from Columbia University, and she says this doesn't mean all dementia patients have Lyme, but she says the study shows that some patients could potentially have both. Now, coming up tomorrow on day four of Tick Week, deer ticks that carry those diseases continue to march into new areas of Maine, and we'll look at how climate change could possibly be play playing a role. That's all coming up tomorrow on Tick Week. Reporting live from South Portland, I'm New Center Maine's Vivian Lee. Back to you, Pat.